Hi everyone, this is YML and today we are going to discuss about what are the p-values and how they can be useful. So to begin with, imagine that we have a fair coin with 50% chance of obtaining heads and 50% chance of obtaining tails and we toss it one time and get a heads and we toss it again and we get heads again and again and again and all tosses until this point are heads. Now you might wonder Whoa, this coin might be really special. So to make sure, we toss it again 24 more times and everything is heads again. No, we can say with a high certainty that our coin is quite special. However, the next question you might ask is, but it was necessary to toss it 30 times to understand that our coin was special? Maybe 29 tosses were necessary to understand that. Or maybe half of that, 15 tosses. Or maybe the first time when we thought that our coin was special, we were right and all the following tosses were unnecessary. Well, p-values help us to solve exactly these kinds of problems where you observe some data and you wonder if it aligns with our hypothesis. And for our coin tossing problem, it could tell us after how many heads our results became statistically significant. Okay, and now let's get down to business and let's see how we can compute the p-values. So the first thing to do is to establish a null hypothesis, which in our case would be that our coin is no different from a normal coin. Then we observe our data, which for our coin is n heads after n tosses. And now we can compute the p-value as the probability of the cases that are at least as extreme as the n heads, given that the null hypothesis is true. And spoiler alert, if you wonder what at least as extreme means, just stick with me, we'll cover that shortly. And after we have computed the p-value, we have two cases. If the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis and thus we can say that we probably have a quite special coin. Or if the p-value is greater or equal to alpha, we do not reject the null hypothesis so we can say with certainty that our coin is special. And for those of you that might wonder, alpha is a constant and is called a significance level and this value depends on the type of problem you are trying to solve. It is usually set to 0.05 and we we'll lose this value from no onwards. And now, as I promised, let's see what it means at least as extreme as n heads by looking at a specific case where you get two heads after two tosses. So here we have the null hypothesis, which is exactly the same as in the general case. And we assert two heads after two tosses. And as we discussed, we compute the p-value as the probability of tosses that are at least as extreme as two heads, given that the null hypothesis is true. To do that, we look at all possible outcomes of two tosses. So we toss the coin once and we get a 50-50 chance for heads or tails. Remember that our null hypothesis is true, so we can compute the probability as if the coin was fair. And we toss it again and get the following outcomes with the following probabilities. So we get a 25% chance to obtain two heads, 25% chance to obtain two tails, and 50% chance to obtain a tails and a head. And the cases that are at least as extreme as two heads are two cases whose probability are less or equal than the probability of obtaining two heads. So the cases are two heads and two tails, each having a probability of 25%. So our p-value would be equal to 0.25 plus 0.25, which is equal to 0.5. And if we assume a significance level alpha equal to 0.05, we get that our p-value is greater than alpha. So we cannot reject the null hypothesis and thus we can say that our coin is special after just two heads. And now we can compute the p-value for each number of heads that we obtain in our coin tossing game. For one head we obtain a p-value of 100% because the other case that is at least as extreme as one heads is one tails and these two are the only two possibility of one toss. So yeah, getting only one heads is not special at all. And for two tosses we computed this p-value previously and it is equal to 0.5. For three heads we get a p-value of 0. 25. For 4 heads we get a p-value of 0.125. For 5 heads we get a p-value of 0.0625. You can see that we are getting quite close. And finally for 6 heads we get a p-value of 0.03 something something. 
which is lower than our alpha of 0.05, so we can finally reject the null hypothesis and conclude that our coin might be quite special at this point. So yeah, it was not necessary to toss the coin 30 times and get 30 heads in order to be able to say that our coin is quite special. And it was necessary to toss it only 6 times and get 6 heads in order to be able to say that. However, what if at some point in the beginning we get a tails? Could we still say that after 6 tosses our coin is special? And if not, how many heads would be necessary to be able to say that again? For the example depicted here, we obtain the same p-value for the first two tosses, but what about the third where we get the tails? What is the p-value of observing this data? To compute that, we have to compute again the probabilities of each possible outcome, assuming that we have a fair coin. So here on the left, we have all the possible outcomes of three tosses. And these are the probabilities of each possible outcome. So the probability of obtaining three heads is 0 0.125. The probability of obtaining two heads and one tails is 0 0.375. The probability of obtaining one heads and two tails is 0 0.375. And the probability of obtaining three tails is 0 0.125. And now to compute the p-value, we have to sum up all the probabilities that are at least as extreme as two heads and one tails. Or equivalently, the probabilities of the cases that are lesser or equal to the probability of two heads and one tails, which for this case is composed of all the possible outcomes since two tails and one heads is as extreme as two heads and one tails and three tails or three heads are even more extreme so consequently our p-value would be also equal to one thus observing two heads and one tails is as surprising as observing one heads or one tails which is now surprising at all and if you ask me this is quite an interesting result so now we computed the p-values for observing one heads and two heads and two heads and one tails and if we continue on assuming that we would get only heads we would need another success to obtain a p-value lower than alpha in order to get a statistically significant result. And now let's recap what we have learned so far about p-values. So a p-value is a statistical measurement used to validate a hypothesis against the observed data. And in our case discussed in this video, we assume that our coin was a fair one. And using the observed data from coin tossing, we could compute the p-value and establish how our tossing results on the line with our assumption, verifying whether our coin might be special or not. Finally, I would like to say that this way of thinking and validating our assumption using p-values can be extrapolated to many problems such as drug discovery or population measurements. Also, I have to say that in this video, I used a two-sided p-value and that there also exists a single-sided p-value and the difference between the two might be a subject for another video. As always, I would like to thank you for watching this video. Please leave a like to it if you enjoyed. Subscribe to be up to date with the new content and until next time, I hope you have a wonderful time. See you!